Today I want to talk to you about the wonderful world of leafhoppers and plant hoppers. This is a group of insects that I've been working on for the last 40 years. Now the leafhoppers and plant hoppers belong to the order Hemiptera. This is the fifth largest insect order with over 84,000 species in the world. All feed using sucking mouth parts. Some are plant feeding, some feed from animals like bed bugs. Now they're, they're uh, divided into three main groups and specialists tend to be specialists on, on only part of those groups. And you have the, the sternorinca, the, the white fly, scale insects, aphids, psyllids. You have the heteroptera or, or true bugs. And then you have the organorinca, which will be the focus of much of this talk which are the leaf hoppers and plant hoppers and spittle bugs. Just a few slides to show you or remind you of pictures of, of some of these groups. These are the some aphids, um, which have which can have pretty amazing life cycles. This is a, just a screenshot from Google. Um, the life cycles <coughs> can feature alternation of generations between different hosts and um, different host plants and and even the sort of basic form of the the insects chain can change then you have the white fly familiar to many of you who are gardeners from sort of being very very common on cabbages um, the the adults of many white flies all look much the same and the taxonomy is done largely on the sort of pupil characters in the uh, morphological characters on the pupil skin here are some scale insects and mealybugs. Again, familiar to some of you from houseplants, but otherwise fairly sort of cryptic insects, although can be very, very common in some situations. Psyllids also might be uncommon, might be uh, unknown to many of you, but can be uh, very common on, on many trees. <clears throat> Finally, among these groups, the, the heteroptera, or the, or the true bugs, hugely diverse group, as many of you will have known, ranging from shield bugs to to, uh, to lace bugs, um, to water bugs of different sorts, and assassin bugs, and, and the numerous myrids, or capsid bugs as they used to be called, found on many plants. So among the Orchidorinca, the leaf hoppers and plant hoppers, they, as I said, they're all feed, all plant feeding, and again divided into four groups, plant hoppers, um, the fulgroidia, with, with 21 families, at least 10,000 species in the world, leaf hoppers and tree hoppers, um, with a, perhaps as many as 100,000 species. Then you have, then you have spittle bugs, um, with four families, and, and finally cicadas. And here's a range of, um, of Plant hoppers, um, again showing the sort of huge range of uh, forms and colours in, in this group and size. Cicadas may be fairly well known to many people because if you've taken uh, holidays to, to warmer places, um, you will have certainly heard these and perhaps seen them. Uh, um, in America, the, the famous Magis cicada or, or periodical cicada um, appears once every 17 years or 19 years. Then you have the, the, uh, the true tree hoppers, again hugely diverse in form. The, the species found in Europe are rather, rather boring really compared with those found in Central and South America where you have ones that look like thorns and appear to be sort of carrying ants or other um, structures on their backs. <clears throat> the spittle bugs are all are known because the the nymphal stages all live within a spittle mass, which is produced by the the nymph by th frothing up the sap that comes out of it at the back end and s sitting inside it. Not necessarily a uh, an attractive way of living, but it does for them. And then finally, some a range of leaf hoppers. Many leafhoppers are really important economically because they spread virus and other diseases to plants. 
but some of them are enormously beautiful uh, and these are a set of, um, of what are commonly known particularly in America as sharpshooters and, and these are among the most beautiful of the leafhoppers. Now the British orchid orinca fauna is rather impoverished on a, on a world stage but we have about 400 species. In Central Europe there are about 600 species known. About almost 300 of these 400 are in Britain are, are leafhoppers and then smaller numbers of other groups with a good number of delphacid plant hoppers. This is a range of British leafhoppers, rather smaller than the tropical ones. Some of them are very pretty when you can see them down a microscope. This is our sole British cicada with its nymph skin that it's hatched out of. Um, the nymphs are, um, all live underground in this group. Um, this species, which is confined to the new forest, has not been seen for about 20 years, 15, 20 years, so it may be, <coughs> may be sadly uh, extinct. Then we have two tree hopper species, um, which are fairly cryptic and may occasionally be seen. The, 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 uh, the true Cercopid in Britain, um, Cercopis vulnerata, can be quite common in the spring for a very short period, and obviously with its bright coloration um, is, is, is pretty uh, remarkable. The other, the other spittle bugs are more cryptic and sober coloured, the common spittlebug, Phalanus, has got a range of different colour forms, and that, which has actually been well studied in, uh, in, in Northern Europe. So among the plant hopper families, you've got delphacids, and you've got, which are common, very common on different grasses. Then you've got one species of Tetragometra, which is found on some chalk grassland in, in southern Britain. Two acid species, and about ten sixids, and another plant hopper family where the nymphs of this group live underground and the adults feed from different plants. Now the host plants of leaf hoppers and plant hoppers, the majority of them are monophagous. They feed only on single plant species or one genus perhaps, or they may feed on a range of, of related genera of plants. The spittlebug is actually very prolificous, which is, and it's quite um, surprising that it's very, very prolificous uh, and feeds on up to a thousand species of dicots. Um, some leafhopper families, or subfamilies rather, specialise in trees and shrubs, while others are found on grasses. And the majority of Delphacidae are found on grasses and sedges. Now among there are many interesting features of the biology of uh, leafhoppers and plant hoppers. The wing dimorphism is, is particularly interesting and, and common in delphacids. These two species, these two photographs, are the same species. One has got long wings and can fly, and the other one, known as Brachypterus form, um, has got short, -winged, short wings and is unable to fly. And in certain situations, you may have a species that is almost always short-winged. It becomes long-winged if the habitat becomes poor. Perhaps in a hot summer, the species is able to determine that the season is not going so well for it and develops long wings, so it might be able to disperse. I mean, there's many good reasons why we would use leaf hoppers and plant hoppers to study invertebrate fauna of particularly meadows. For instance, they, they occur in high, num high numbers, high individual numbers and species numbers. There may be as many as 50 species in a good meadow in, in the UK. They can occur also in very large numbers and species numbers. Um, they, they're certainly an important component of the grassland invertebrate fauna. And their responses to the management are immediate. Obviously, if you, if you uh, mow the uh, a meadow or cut the meadow, the insects will disperse or um, otherwise disappear. And so you have a change in dominance and community structure. And the sampling of the species range can be done on two or three dates in a year and so that you get a good idea of what's happening. Some also are um, spring species, and some are sort of main summer species, and then you have species that are only found once a year, and others have two generations. 
the majority overwinter as eggs and some as adults and some as nymphs. And there are severe, significant climate change effects with species moving north in Europe quite, quite rapidly. And some of these species are arriving in the UK. And about 30 species have, have been added to the UK checklist in about the last 20 years. And then some of the native, currently native species have also extended their range. So if you wish to identify them, strangely, well, it might seem strange, that we use um, German guides, which are very fortunately in English, um, together with, um, supplemented by earlier guides to the British fauna, um, by publishers' handbooks by the Royal Entomological Society. And these, these four are available as PDF files that can be downloaded. And then we, I was involved in producing a supplement to the to the German book, which includes a, an updated checklist of the UK species. But we also have a recording scheme for the, for the group. And then there's the British Bugs website, which doesn't only include the uh, um, leaf hoppers and plant hoppers, but the, the other hemiptera. And it has some introductory features with labelled labeled photographs, and then has a um, gallery of photographs of the common species, which are really very useful if you find a species that you wish to try and identify um, um, at home. Thank you for listening.